Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrod Show. I'm your host, Sherrod. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday evening. This is Super Bowl Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. The Chiefs and the Buccaneers are going at it right now. We will get you an update on the score. They're just coming in for the third quarter. I'm so excited. Who's your team that you're rooting for this evening? But in, in speaking of rooting, we have a very special guest and a very special episode tonight on the show. We have a celebrity artist. This young lady can sing. She can really get down, produce hits. She's very humble, and she's all, all the way in Colombia. And this is her first time on the Sherrard Show. Maria, she is on the Sherrard Show this evening. So excited to have her with her business partner. But before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, the Sherrard Show is brought to you by Essence Television. This is my new network for watching your best episodes of the show. You can see episodes from Smokey Robinson, Manhattans, the Isley Brothers. We just recently had the Commodores on yesterday, and we have Maria tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So we're so excited to have her on. You can just see the um, icon on your television set, and you can go to Essence, add it to your Roku, Amazon, or you can have it on your Apple TV as well. And then the Sherrod Show is also brought to you by Queen Team Apparel. These are the nicest apparel you can ever wear. Look at your monitor. You can see they have Sherrod Show t-shirts. You have wear for wears for women, swimsuits, etc. Just follow to Queen Team Apparel right below. Click it and get something custom designed. Well, in this, in this past year with the COVID-19, this was a heck of a year for a lot of parody, a lot of ups and downs, sicknesses, but a lot of good music to be able to back up the times we're in. And today's topic, we're gonna to be speaking about using my voice to speak to a nation and we couldn't pick a better person to have on the show than Maria to talk about her life, her welcome back to music, as well as what her plans are. Welcome Maria, how are you? Hi, how are you, Cher? I'm so I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the invite. Glad to have you on. And then we have James, her business partner that's there as well. How are you, sir? I am good, Sherard. Thank you very much. Good to see you all both. And I started with you, Maria. Um, what have you been doing when you were on your hiatus for music and what brought you back? Well, I was out. I needed some time, I guess, for me, for myself to, to study, to study, to have a, a college degree. And I... I went out, I, I, stu I studied fashion and marketing communication. And through all that time, I, I, get, I get to fall in love with the influence marketing. That's what changed my life. Fashion changed my life. But music, I, I have always been been very, very attractive to music. So I guess your real passions cannot be hidden anywhere. And that's the reason when I met this lovely guy, he brought me back to that, to that passion, to that, to that love I had for art, to that reality and to that, that craziness that music drove me. And that's the reason I am back. I am back. I am back after meeting him. I am back with lots of music, lots of songs, lots of everything. And I am so excited about it. So, so when you initially left the first time, it kind of music kind of burned you out. Was it people pulling you two different directions? You lost your creativity. What yeah. was the main thing that caused you to burn out? I guess the main thing was that I let myself get lost. It was me. The, the, the problem was me. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't anyone. The problem was me. And, and I guess um, rediscovering all this power and all these things I have, thanks to this cutie, is one of the reasons I am still here and I am going back with really good music. Very good. Now, James, I'm going to kick it over to you for a moment. Now, James, what is it that you did? What was your secret to getting her back going again and how you were able to reinvigorate her? Uh, well, I guess it's, uh, it's about, mm, 
it's about giving love to everybody. I guess, I guess that's the answer. I guess she was probably a little bit crippled emotionally thanks to past, past experiences. And she, she couldn't find herself back to writing, back to singing. She, she was closed up emotionally. I think that that was a problem. And then uh, I guess I come in, I'm very smiley. <laughs> I'm usually a happy person. So that infected her a little bit and allowed her to open again open up again you know um music is a business but in order for you to first get into it you must have a passion for it because when it gets too businessy it takes the passion away from it so how are you able to gauge yourself now maria where you can be able to say you know what um, i'm going to sing with passion and let the business take care of itself well it's a tough question you know but but i guess that when you fall in love of what you want to do in your life, you understand life itself. And for example, for me, um, having all that, like all the business and all the, I was an, an artist signed by EMI when the time when, when EMI was very big. And I had all, oh, I had everything, every artist, could have ever asked for. But for having that, I let myself get lost. And I think that nowadays that I know all the power is in me, that's going to be the big break. I guess something like that could be the answer. You know, it's beautiful because a lot of people, um, and I know you concur with this, James, a lot of people get lost in the music industry, in the acting, fashion, and they never find themselves. Isn't she fortunate to be able to have found herself again? Oh, totally. Yeah, she totally is. I mean, it's something that could never happen again. Uh, I guess it depends as well on, on what you learn through life, what you, what you fixate on. If uh, you learn to fixate on on happiness again and positive stuff and positive vibe, you're, you'll get there. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, it can be closed up forever. It depends, I guess, on the trauma and, uh, you know, other stuff. But, uh, yeah, thankfully she did. And she's super smiling now and super happy. <laughs> yeah. That's a beautiful thing. But, you know, the world needs your voice, Maria. The, vo the world needs your voice. The world needs the stories that you're telling because music is universal. Music speaks a language. I don't care if you're black, green, blue, or yellow. It speaks a beautiful language that is colorless. And that's what your music stands for in terms of that. We are speaking to Maria. She is a Colombian artist, superstar. Actually, she's sitting here on the Shiraz show. We really appreciate her and James taking a moment or two out on this Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, to be on the Shiraz show. We are taking your questions or comments. Or we are currently live on Facebook, so you can always shoot your questions or comments to this wonderful um couple right in front of me in the Sherrod show. Now, let me kick this over to you, Maria. Um, I had the Commodores on the show yesterday, and he was in Scotland when we were speaking. And he's moved over to Sp Scotland, uh, one of the artists from, Com from the Commodores. And we were talking about, I asked him a question, what is the music business like in Scotland? Is it the same as it is in America? Uh, dirty if you let it be, or is it a cleaner business there in Colombia? Well, sad news. I think it's worse, worse. It's, it's really complicated, you know? When I started, it was 15 years ago, which was, everything was completely different because you didn't have a Facebook, you, well, a, a Facebook was starting, but Instagram did not, didn't exist. You didn't have Zoom. You didn't have like all the connections that I see. Like I, I, I receive a lot of messages from my fans. And I try my best to answer at least what some, somehow of the, of the messages, because I know for me, if when I had 15 years, I would have written to Shakira and if she would have answered, my life would have been very different. That way I feel the music business in, Latin America, in Colombia, in, when I started was completely like, at that time you didn't have to pay to sound in the radio. 
at that time, you pl were playing in the radio because your fans called to ask this, the, the song. And that was the way. And, and I got to be like um, on top 40 for mostly a year with Mas y Mas, Cada Vez, and Que Paso, because fans loved that, the songs, not because you had a publicist that paid to the radio man and th those kind of, of things. That's the reason I am like somehow scared sometimes. And, and that's the reason I guess I need this cutie by my side because he gives me power, he gives me strength and he, he, will, he will get always try to bring me down to earth. Mm -hmm. You know what? Well, you, you, this is the third time you mentioned about James Power. I mean, is he part X Men? Are you an X Men or something, James? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, I guess, I guess he could be like Spider Man. Spider Man. <laughs> okay. He does look a little bit like Peter Parker with the long hair. That's great. Yeah. But as well as you had somebody there, that's wonderful. And you mentioned something that's pretty interesting, Amaria, in terms of um. You know, back in the 70s and 80s, yes, and even in the 60s, when a song was great, they would just request it. And it would go up to the million dollar mark, to the million viewer mark, or the million, million listener mark because of what people requested. It wasn't about dollars and cents. Is it really a hit if you have to pay somebody to um, play it? Is that really a hit? I just want to know that. For me, well, like, I know there are some big tunes that I, I really admire those singers or songwriters or whatever. But what I feel is that music shouldn't, you shouldn't need to pay for, 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 for singing, for, for making art. That's, that's my, my thoughts. Um, and nowadays for me that, that I see, I see, I see all these people like, asking money or publicists and paying or asking money, I say, my God, can't believe it. When I started to make music, I did it because I couldn't find any other way of feeling good, of calming my, my broken heart, my, my sadness, my whatever I did songs for. And I, Question today, I say to myself, I can't believe that if I want, I have a song and I wanted to share it, you have to pay that. I, I know there, there, there must be another way. And that's what I'm trying to figure out because I know, I know like, like blogging and, and all this stuff I learned from marketing music and all this stuff I learned in the last 15 years, let me understand that what you were saying is exactly what happens. The muse, the world needs music, no matter your class, your race, your nothing, because one song, one song could change someone's life. That is that's, correct. That's, that's the reason correct. I am trying to figure out how will I come back down to the business? Now, um, let me kick it to you, James, for a minute. Now, um, are you one of her writers? Do you write some of her songs? Not songs yet. Probably in the future, I will. I would love to, if she allows me to, of course. I mean, that'd be fantastic. The thing is, she is a wonderful writer. I mean, there's no need for me to, to get in the mix if she doesn't want to. But yeah, I would love to. You know, the interesting I, thing about it, Maria, is that when I listen to your songs, it sounds like the, you feel the passion of them, first and foremost, and they, they come off quite personal. Am I misreading or mishearing that, or is that correct? No, it's, it's totally, I, I, that, that's the truth. I, my songs are songs to true stories I have lived, and I feel that's the reason why I love music, because it was the only way to, to cure a broken heart. And I had, I, I remember when Masimas uh, released, I remember lots of fans writing me like, your song 
give me a reason to leave and not to kill myself because my boyfriend had kicked me. And for me, that's the reason I wrote Masimas because I was in a dark place. I was broken, I was destroyed. I was, I couldn't find any other way to other than make music and let my heart explode and tell the truth. You know, that's very rewarding when you pour your heart out and someone tells you, even one person, one person out of a million tells you that you saved their life with yeah. your music. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, I, 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 I remember really a, a, a girl that wrote me, Mare, I tried to kill myself yesterday, but a friend of mine sent me your song and thanks to that song, I am still alive. Whoa, that really impacts me and and make me feel like like God had sent me for a reason to the world. And that that I don't know. I probably I am I am you know I am you know you know me like I am so 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 humble. I try at least I try to be. But that 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 message I received it really changed my life, and and I remember I remember it. I thought I thought I I last week or something like that. I received a message from my blog from for a girl telling me, "Mare, your car your cartas urgentes," which is a section in my blog where I I write love letters. That's it. And for all the boys, all the stories, for stories that I heard from my friends. And a girl write me, you re reading your last love letter made me feel that I'm not crazy. Thank you for that. And for me, it was like, whoa, I, I that, that when she wrote me that, it took me back to that place. When, when the little girl writing from Asimas, and at that time, I say, oh my God, Marie, this is the reason God brought you to earth. I don't know if, if, if things will explode, like I know they will, but, but for me, making music, it's magical. It's like, it's my passion. I, I don't see any other way of living in, in my life without, without music. So speaking on that topic of music, um, what are you? What is your view of music? Now, before you answer that, and we'll take your questions. We see the lines are uh, blowing up. We'll take your questions in a moment. Um, when you look at music, I have different legendary, and I'm very blessed to have different legendary artists um, who've gone back from the 60s to the 70s, all the way now to the 2020s. And I always ask the question, what era of music did they enjoy the most? Was it back in Motown? Was it the doo -wop? Was yeah. it uh, the disco era? Was it the rap era? What is the era of music that you enjoyed the most? And I will kick it to you first, Maria. What is the era uh, of music that you find yourself stopping to listen to? Is it a Temptation song? Is it Selena? Who is it, would you say? Oh my God, I have, I have so many, like so many songs that I think about like when 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 you ask me the first person I thought was Shakira. Shakira, I admire her since Donde están los ladrones? No, since Pies Descalzos, which was her first album. No, no, her second one, because the first was Magia, which nobody at that time nobody knew. But the first one, Pies Descalzos, oh my God, that 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 woman for me is like a goddess it's like a diva it's like like who i always have admired and well then after that i i i adore taylor swift like i really have a, a girlfriend crush for a girl taylor swift adele drives me crazy but if you make, if you ask me about music, I would talk about the Beatles. The Beatles, 
there's nothing like the Beatles. <laughs> I, I, am, I, I am crazy because I, I come from here to there, but, but that, you know, that's, 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 that's very good. That means that you have a nice variety and you like all kinds of music and you're not limited to just one genre. What about you, James? Well, I guess it would be rap music, the rap era. Yeah, definitely. Is Actually, that right? Yeah. When I was back at school, back in school, back in here in Bogota, actually, in Nacio Moderno, I had a I had a radio show where I spoke about a little bit of uh, rap history, uh, more for you know Spanish rap, uh, meaning from Spain, and Colombian rap, Latin Latin American rap. Yeah, I wow. really enjoyed that. That was that was a beautiful time. I mean, I. So much to learn around that music, uh, so many, so much through history it's lived, so, uh, so much heritage it's uh, composed of, composed, made of, you know, it's, it's beautiful. I love the rap and I love the rhythm. I mean, it just, it flows through me like it's natural. Very good. Very good. Now, um, we're going to start taking our questions in one moment. Um, so many people are trying to get into the room. I've never seen that before. I guess you got stalkers and fans all trying to get into the room tonight, Maria. I've never seen that. But Maria, um, my question to you, though, is for people who are, especially women, young lit girls, who look up to you, want to get out there and perform in the industry as well, but um can be discouraged because of all the things women have to go through in the industry. What kind of advice would you give them? To never, ever accept a no from anyone. Like if 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 there's someone that's telling you, oh, you're not going to be no no one. You're going to be no. Please, girls, trust yourself. Love yourself. That's what's going to change everything. That's what. I have been learning in the last six months with the, with this tiny little thing, but I I can I can understand like how is it possible for a woman to be I don't know how how to explain it but like to to not accept what what you deserve and oh well that will be like my 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 advice my I advice guess. <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> now um being that what it is you're saying that in your career you've received a lot of no's people said no and this and that and said mm. critical things tons. about it. tons 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 i remember the first song i write like the first love song was recuerdo and I wrote it when I was 12 years old. I remember lots of people making me bully or laughing at me because at that time I was, I was a little bit fatter. I don't know how to explain. Gordo. And, gordo. Yeah, <laughs> gordo, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and, and nowadays I, 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 I think to myself, how is it possible that the bullies, I let myself affected by, by the, those words from like, you should love yourself, whether you are fat, thin, uh, whatever, because you are you, woman, you are you. And, and that's, well, that's my message. Well, that's a beautiful thing because um, many of the people that are criticizing and tearing you down and making fun of you be the first ones buying tickets to your concerts. I know that I know that and and you you you, you can imagine like how I really want I, I I really would love to start touring again because I remember those times oh my god we had a lot of fun it, it was for me what it, it was magical and for me today in my creativity thinking about how we could start touring again like it would be like the show of my dreams because I know now what I should do because I have learned a lot of things during this time. Well, that's wonderful. I hope um, when you begin touring again and the COVID is over, you'll make a stop to Southern California out here in Los Angeles. So we Absolute, can, um... abso I, would, 
I, 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 I travel really often to Los Angeles because there is my little sis, which is the most amazing producer in Latin America and in, every, in everywhere. Like, if you ask me, like, what producer would I love to work? I would say Ali Stone. That's my little sister. Hi, Ali. Very good. Very good. Well, we definitely look forward to having you here in Southern California. Um, as well as um, we're going to be playing some of her music so you can be able to get to know Maria if you don't already, but I'm sure you do. Now it's time to take some questions, ladies and gentlemen. These questions um, are coming from all over the world, and they are so excited about the interview tonight. This is from Gabriel. This is from Gabriel from Atlanta. He said, you all make a beautiful couple. Um, we really appreciate you all being on the Sherrod Show. You make great music. His question to you, Maria, is um, when are you coming back again to uh, the States to perform and where can we purchase your music? Well, you can find me all over the iTunes, Spotify, um, all the digital marketplace. You can find me. My albums are Marre. The first one is called Marre. The second one, Sombras de Luz. And I have two singles over there. You can check them out. They are Estás Lejos and Tu y Yo. Those are like the most um, important uh, places where you can find my music. Okay, and he wants to know when you're going to be touring again. I guess it, when the COVID's over? I guess. I guess like I, I need to go back to the studio, start recording. That's the first, like when I, when I, I already, the, the songs are there. I know they are. I just need to go to the studio and record. And after that, I hope soon all this COVID and everything is over so I can start to go back to business. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. This question is from Cha Cha from Denver. Her question is, wow, oh, congratulations to you and all your success that you do. Her question is, what song have you written that really hits home in terms of the things you've gone through? Very good question, Cha Cha. Well, hmm. I have written lots of songs, but that, that reminds me of my grandpa. He, he was the first person that believed in me since I was five years old. And I wrote to him a song. I sang to him in his 80th birthday which was the last birthday he was alive. And that song, well, he was a poet. I know I, know I am a poet thanks to him, like, because he wrote, he acted, he, he was like the best lawyer in all Bucaramanga, and I know it. But for me, that song, it was a poem I wrote to him and I will always remember Abuelito and that night, eh, which was the last night I got to be with him. And, and that's one of the songs. It has never been on an album, but I know I will probably release it someday because I know saying whenever he, wherever he is, I know he is here with me. And, and he has been always there with me. And so at some point you're gonna release it on an album, you said? Yeah, of course. I know I know that song will be would be on an album. Mm -hmm. That one and, and another one that's a very important for me, which is called Jore. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. It's um, a, it's a well, like sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead with your thought. Go ahead with your thought. I want you to completely answer her question. Um Jore, it's the most beautiful song I have ever written. Till now, I don't know, probably, I know I will wrote many good things, mm -hmm. but Jore for me, it's like a precious, like it's a song. Um, I have been told like several times that I should sell that song to an artist, to to, to someone instead of having it. And I always say, I will sell 
any other song, but Lloré would never ever touch it by anyone because that song for me, it's my big deal. It's like, for me, that's, I don't know how to explain it, but for me, that's like the biggest song I have ever written. So I know those two songs, I will be sending or releasing them later. And Very good. Very good. All right, this question is from Paul, from Paul from Seattle, Washington. His question is for you, James. He has two questions, actually. His first question is, how are you able to manage such a beautiful and feisty woman? Oh, well. <laughs> James, that's the first one. We need to hear that. Well, I said it before. I'll say it again. I mean, you need to keep a smiley face. That's that's uh, probably one of the most important features. But, uh, well, workout helps yoga <laughs> it's good uh and actually you understand each other to different through different levels i mean i'm i'm very emotional and sensitive to on my own way uh so we understand each other on that level a lot we actually cry together a lot <laughs> <laughs> that's our one of our best um plans together you yeah. normally cry you, you normally cry together off of a movie no. Oh, okay. No, we sit down to talk and and talk about life and cry. That's go. that's us. That's, I mean, it comes we out are natural. Crazy. Yeah. It's you know, it's something that happens. It it frees you a little bit after you you're done crying. Um, yeah. I mean, we're just very similar, so it's easy to 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 both with with her. Very good. And then Paul's uh, second question is for you, Maria. What is the biggest challenge you face being an artist today? Oh my God. I guess feeling lonely. I hate feeling lonely because I am, like Jamie said, I am so, so, so emotional that every time I feel I am lonely, I get myself destroyed. That could be an answer. I don't know if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. So, uh -huh. so you're saying? Let me just make sure I can understand this correctly. You're saying that, um, you know, feeling alone, even when you're with somebody, or just when you're off somewhere, he's not with you, and you just feel alone. No, being alone, alone. Like when traveling, I remember oh, it was so hard for me being without my family because I am super familiar. Um, I remember those days, like I, in those times, my manager was my mother. And we travel like all around the world with her. But I remember thinking of how much I miss my father, my sisters, and, and that, that loneliness is what I hate it. I know that today I could be able to, to start traveling again, but but that that would be like something difficult for me. Very good. Now, James, do you want to interject something? Uh, no, I think I'm gonna, the, the moment's fast. Okay. It's more of a, okay. okay, we have time for one last question. And this question is from, Oh, Jamie, this is from Jamie and Jamie all the way in Idaho. Her question is, first of all, congratulations to you. You're doing a, such a great job. She's inspired by this conversation as well. Her question is, does singing come from your background and your family or are you just the only one that's an artist? No, no, no. I guess, I guess we are, we are the crazy Colombian family. I remember that when the Kardashians were out uh, I had an, I had someone that worked in TV in Colombia and said, I would love to make the Gomez family, like keeping up with the Kardashians, but keeping up with the Gomez, because my father is a, me is a medician. My sister, uh, the, the second one uh, is producer, an artist. The third one is, act is actress and she loves theater, but all the, all the three of us are completely crazy, each one in our way. So I guess, I guess it's something that comes in the blood. I don't know how to explain it, but 
but I have like when when I was a baby, I remember I remember it's the first thought I and, and the first memory I have ever had. My mom, I couldn't go to sleep if she didn't um como se dice? Iraq you. Yeah. Iraq. And sing, sing and dance to me was the only way I could go to sleep. And that way was the same thing she did for Ali, my sister, and for Mafis. So I guess I guess it's something that that's on the blood on, on the don't know what. My 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 grandfather was loved, love, love, love music. And but no, they're um, all like all my family are lawyers. All my family are like there's not no one crazy and and different as me, but I, I guess that's what makes me special. Very much so, very much so. Well, we thank you all for your questions. Um, now we can't take all the questions, but we appreciate that. Um, Maria, where can the fans be able to reach out to you if they have any further questions? What's your email contact information? Mind Absolutely. you, before she gives it, before she gives Absolutely. it. Absolutely, you guys can write me marre, arroba marremusic.com. It's as simple as that. I think it's better uh, if you spell it down. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, because I can't roll my tongue like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. M A R R E at M A R R E M U S I C. Okay, everybody, you see, it, you see it right on your monitor there. Um, so, one final question for me, and then we're going to get on out of here. Maria, tell us. Um, how are you using your music, your voice, to change the world? Well, a tough question, but I guess I am trying to be honest and to speak the truth, to speak my feelings, to speak my reality, to speak my craziness, to speak it all. And that's the reason I know I will get wherever the hell I want. <laughs> um, I love making music and I, I, I made it not because my mother says, oh, Marre cantas bonito, you are, you are so pretty. I made it because I needed to make, to get out of, of my craziness. I don't know if, if, if you understand, it's a little bit I get it. I get it. And I think, and I, and I know James gets it too. Yeah. Many times, <laughs> many times you can, this world can make you crazy, but you can get it all out. Either you're going to kill somebody or you're going to play some music. So exactly. Beautiful. Exactly. That's, that's the reason I made music. Mm -hmm. As simple Very as that. Very good. Uh, James, any final thoughts for you? Well, uh, no, I'm just happy to see the process uh, where she's gone so far. I'm happy to, uh, to see her through this interview. She's been smiley, happy. Um, no, I'm just, you know, uh, tell everybody the same. Uh, if you have a broken heart, go ahead and turn it into art. It's, uh, it, it seriously is better than going to the doctor. It's just, what I said before, it's cathartic. It's just something that will clean up your soul and eventually give you a path to follow. Uh, you don't have to be good at the beginning. Uh, you get good while you do it. Do it a lot. It's, it's all about, yeah, passion, as we said before, and the keeping it together, man. <laughs> That's it. Very impressive individuals that stopped by the Sherrard Show. Maria, I want to first thank you for stopping by the show. Um, it's been an honor and more than a pleasure, as well as you, James, for taking a moment out to be on the Sherrard Show this Super Bowl Sunday. I hope and pray you all do come back soon. Will you be coming back soon? Of course. Of, I know I know we'll be in late really soon. I appreciate yeah. that. And we're going to have a sit down interview in my studio whenever you are. So that is, that's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned for our next episode of the Sherrard Show. Where Mr. Master P will be stopping by the show, as well as Mr. Booth, man, all the way from Trinidad. You don't want to miss it. If you do miss it, you can watch it on Essence Television. It's right on your monitor. And then also you can listen to it on iHeartRadio. Enjoy the rest of the evening. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye now. Bye. Be sweet. Take care now. Bye-bye, Sherrard. Thanks. 
Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Sherrod Show. If you like additional information about our episodes, you can log on to thesherrodshow.com. You can also check us out on social media, like us on Facebook, look at our YouTube video, subscribe to our newsletter at Essence Television Networks at gmail.com. If you would like to get information to the host, Sherrod, you can email him at thesherrodshow.com. Once again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.